You're listening to the Health Coach Nation podcast. My name is Haley Rowe, and I'm a business coach for online health coaches who want to attract their ideal clients, stop feeling defeated by their never-ending to-do list, balance a healthy lifestyle with their growing business, and stop overanalyzing what everybody thinks of them so that they can confidently own their message and online presence. On this podcast, we dive deep into health information you can share with your clients, business strategy tips, and more. Let's get to it. Hey there, really excited about today's episode. It's part three of my three-day Instagram series that I did in the Health Coach Nation Facebook group. So you're going to be listening to a Facebook Live replay, and I do mention my Zero to Hero Health Coach group program in this episode of the podcast, and the wait list for that program is now open. It will be relaunching in January, so be sure to sign up to get my newsletters and get notifications about when the new program will be launched um, by joining at HaleyRowe.com. Anyways, let's get to the episode. And I do also want to let you know if you leave a review on iTunes and share one of your favorite episodes on social media and tag me on Instagram or Facebook, you can be entered to win prizes, a.k.a. chlorella which is really healthy for you. You should look it up at haleyrow.com slash algae, or you'll win my early bird discount for coaching. So I can't wait to announce the prize winners. Be sure to leave that review on iTunes and share your favorite episode and tag me on Instagram or Facebook. My Instagram name is at Haley underscore row. That's H-A-I-L-E-Y underscore row, R-O-W-E. And if you tag me on Facebook, I'm over at Haley Rowe, just facebook.com slash official Haley Rowe. All right, let's get to the episode. Thanks for listening. Hey, everybody. We are back for the final day of the Instagram three-day mini series, all about how to attract your ideal clients on face. I'm sorry, on Instagram. Today, I asked you guys, what do you want to know about Instagram? And what I hear the most from clients and what I hear the most from you guys is, okay, I get you need to be posting. I get you need to be using Instagram stories. I get that, you know, you, you got to be doing Instagram TV and have the highlights and set up your bio and all that. But what do I do once I'm done with that? <clears throat> and I want to start really attracting clients. Where are they? Why aren't they coming to me? I'm posting. And that has to do with direct messages, right? And building relationships with your following and audience. And a lot of fear comes up around that topic because it's like, what? Like, I have to reach out to a new person? What? I have to build relationships? <clears throat> Sorry, I got a message, so I got distracted. But, um, you know, how does that work? How do I make it not awkward? What do I say? Is it okay if I contact people? Like, what's the deal? And, and sometimes it's not okay if you contact people. And there's a lot of ways you can do this in a way that's majorly a turnoff and also that ruins it for everybody in our industry because you're being sleazy or you're being cheesy or you're being um, too, uh, like, all about the sale and not about building the relationship. So there's definitely some tips that I have around this topic when it comes to direct messaging and attracting your ideal clients on Instagram. Um, so if you have questions as we go, let me know. Otherwise, we'll just dive into the tips. But before we start, I do want to let you know my name is Haley Rowe. I'm a business coach for health coaches. I work with them on booking clients they love and, of course, building a profitable coaching business and overcoming a few things. Time issues. So if you don't have enough time to be building your business, it's a side hustle right now maybe. Um, mindset stuff. So fear of sales, scarcity mindset, etc. Sales and their sales process. And... Um, that's what we talk about. So let's go into the first tip, which is the no-nos when it comes to direct messaging on Instagram. And these are the top five no-nos that I would say please try to avoid. Um, and the first one is, can I send you a short video for you to watch? Okay, so this one has to do less with coaches, but more with network marketing companies. I understand network marketing companies. I used to be in a network marketing company. I still have my account with them. 
um, because I used to really love their products and I used to promote their fitness DVDs and I still use some of the, their fitness DVDs from time to time, but it's not like what I'm actively promoting most because I go to the gym now. So my lifestyle's just changed. So when I don't do something actively and I'm not a product of the product, I stop promoting it, but I got off track. The bottom line is what I'm trying to say is I understand why if you are in a network marketing company, you are sending, asking people to watch your video. And the thing that I want to say about that is two things. I get that your company's training you to do this and that it's the right, they say it's the right first step. I disagree because you are, even though you're part of a network marketing company, you're a personal brand. And why is your company telling you to send them to watch this short video about the product? Because it benefits them, the company, right? They want immediately the brand name to be getting out there and things like that. But here's how it hurts you. You're not building a personal relationship. You're asking somebody to do something that's gonna take them time and something that they might not even want to be doing without even asking them first if they like what they're interested in, what they're all about, what's their story. And it's a big turnoff. So just this week, twice, I've had people contact me and say, hey, like, how are you, you know, whatever. Can I send you a short video to watch about health uh, products or something like that? And I'm like, what? Like, why? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> um, so I don't want to sit down and watch a video about something that I've never, I'm not actively seeking. So what you need to do instead is present yourself as a person to another person and find your common grounds, find your interests, and see if you know they they might have a need for the lifestyle changes that your product provides that's the way i would approach it like a more long-term game rather than just being like hey can i send you a video that's the first thing the second thing is um so have you ever done that or have you ever seen that comment yes or no like yes i've gotten those video requests or no i don't know what you're talking about okay the second thing is um Okay, this is another really common technique when it comes to cold direct messages, and it is presenting something that the person is doing wrong, which is really strange. So I've had a few, for example, in my world, I've had a few people reach out like, hey, I, I really think that you're putting out great content, but here's a few things you can improve and my company can do that for you. Um, or like, hey, I think that you need to um, like, you know, get you should be doing facebook ads and so here's what i do so you if you're a health coach you don't want to comment you don't want to start a conversation by talking about somebody's like weaknesses like hey i noticed you posted a picture of you um eat like eating cake and that's not going to get you to your weight loss goals just wanted to let you know like if you want to work on this let me know that's not what we're what we're going for here um so instead you want to start it friendly and i'm going to talk about how you do that later in the video but first we're still talking about the no-nos and then the last thing is not adding anything personal so what i mean by that is just copying and pasting sometimes seeing the quotes around the message like read your messages um don't you know like i've seen people copy and paste things with the wrong name i've seen them copy and paste it with quotes around it still like from their document or something um, and changing nothing in the message. I'm all about having templates, and in fact, my group program is gonna have a ton of templates to use not only to get local clients or communicate or work with local places to um, put, put have events and things like that, but also online how to, like templates for Facebook, Facebook groups, Facebook messages, templates for Instagram, Instagram direct messages, um, different categories, the way we're going to reach out to people. Like it's going to be very structured, but in the meantime, what I would say when it comes to, um, creating your own template is you can definitely do that. And it's, it would be something like this. Hey, so, and, so, and this would, we're talking about Instagram right now. So let's say you find some, you, you have somebody who's really liking your posts a lot, really getting engaged with you and you just want to get to know them better. Um, and you're not, you know, it's, you just want to start the conversation. So let's say you send a direct message and say, hey, so-and-so, um, it's thank you so much for liking my posts recently. I really appreciate it. And I checked out your profile. I see you're into fitness too. That's awesome. I just wanted to introduce myself in case you're new to my profile. 
I'm a fitness coach for blah 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 and I work with my clients on blah 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 and um, just wanted to see what you're fit what you're up to what your fitness goals are and if there's anything you want me to post about in the future let me know and and that's or, or is there anything you want me to post about in the future is there any current struggles you're having for example you're gonna ask a question to start a conversation that's not like can you sign up for my program right now no, that's not the question we want to ask. <laughs> so instead of something like, what do you want me to post about? So you're gathering market research and you're learning what they struggle with and you're learning how you can help them, right? That's what the question we have in mind is how can we help them? Is it through our content? Is it through our paid programs? Is it through a podcast? Is it through a video we just did on the exact topic they want help with? That's what we're trying to figure out because the goal here is to just build, build, build the relationship, nurture, nurture, plant seeds, plant seeds, okay? So that would be um, what I would say about like making it personal is checking out their profile, inserting something about that. Um, and there you go. So you have the no-nos. Are we clear on the no-nos? What are the no-nos? Don't ask if I could send a short video about your company MLM product. Um, don't talk about what the person is doing wrong. Okay, so like, uh, you know, I saw you ate cake. I'm a health coach. I help people not eat cake. Not what we're talking about. Third thing is um, make sure that it's not too long. I forgot to mention this one. Don't send a, your, your life story and don't make it all about you too. So what a lot of people do is they'll send this long video about all about them. <laughs> I went through this, this, and this. I see that you're into fitness. Let me tell you my fitness story, all that stuff. Um, yay, thanks, Teresa. Clear. Okay, straight to, uh, don't go straight to your offer. That was the other thing, and make sure it's personal. Let's move on. So second thing is pushing versus pulling in marketing. There's this, this concept of you don't want, as, as a coach or a personal brand, you don't want to push people to do something because that's unattractive people don't respond well to that people don't respond well to pressure like that in the beginning when they don't know you second uh so what i'm what i mean by that is you're going to try to pull them naturally like a leader into seeing your great content into a video that might help them that is on the topic that they're interested in into your lead magnet free gift that's going to add value to their life right so that's what i mean by your goal is to pull them so here's an example of um things that you and i was just watching a video today actually from my coach about things that you can control and things you can't control things that you could control is how many people are reaching out to are you building relationships and friendships are you being living up to your values are you putting out great content are you setting up your profile in a way that when they do look at it it's good stuff and there it generates curiosity that's the goal but here's what you can't control how they respond to you if they respond developing an emotional attachment to them um you know things like that so um that would be when it comes to pulling not pushing the think about how you would want to be approached like if there was a topic you they share with you that they're interested in and you have a video or a blog or a podcast or a free gift like a free checklist or roadmap or whatever that's an email opt-in those are nice and non-invasive things to send them because it's going to help them it's on the topic they want they're not you're not asking them to buy anything and they get to know you they you build and know like and trust you follow up and see how they liked it you follow up and see if they wanted to get on a free strategy call or something like that and that is how it unfolds in a good way. Um, so that's what I mean by pull marketing. And by the way, um, like for example, going to Facebook for a quick second, when I have new Facebook group members, I send them a welcome message like, thank you so much for joining my group. Is there any struggles or topics you want me to cover in the group? And you know, how can I help you? And they might say, well, I struggle with procrastination and I have a podcast on procrastination so I might say okay awesome I would start with this let me know how it goes let me know if you have questions about it and then we can talk more about you know how to overcome the procrastination piece so that's just an example okay moving on let's talk about um, the non-invasive calls to action in direct message so you do want to have me a message 
that is conversational, that's friendly, that's talking about your common points, you know, and building relationships. And the good news is like, this is a win no matter what. You're making a new friend, you're either getting a new follower, you're maybe getting somebody who's gonna share your content later, uh, you're maybe getting somebody who is going to join your Facebook group, like it, it, it doesn't mean like this whole DM thing doesn't mean that every single person has to end up buying from you. It means that maybe they just start looking at your content more and they, they like it or, you know, it, it can always be a good thing to just build, plant these seeds every day and you never know where they're going to end up. And it's very fun to play the long game and see over time, like, oh my gosh, that person I talked to six months ago is now like inquiring about my coaching or whatever. So um, just keep that in mind. So non-invasive calls to action include things like um, joining your free gift, like your free email opt-in. And that could be an email series you have set up that leads to a free strategy call, but gives them value, 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 value first. Um, and follows up with them, how did it go, do you have questions, all that kind of stuff. Um, the second thing would be your latest post or a post that uh, on the topic that they might be find interesting. Um, so you're sending them like something of value that you maybe you did a post with healthy eating ideas when they travel and you know they travel for work every week. Um, the third thing would be a question, just a conversational question. Fourth thing would be um, eventually leading it to either your free strategy call or a webinar or whatever, but that's after you've built the relationship a little bit and, and they are in, you know, they express interest in finding a coach or doing a program or something like that. Okay, moving on. One thing I forgot to mention earlier is make sure you're checking your message requests. Because a lot of people, a lot of new Instagram people don't realize that in your DMs, you have people who can message you who are your followers and they're coming up in your messages. But you also have another section and it's in the top corner, it'll say like four message requests or something. And you could click on that and it will show people who don't follow you or who you don't follow, sorry, who you don't follow and who, who have messaged you. So you wanna be sure you're checking those because sometimes it could be a, somebody you know wanting to learn more about your program or something, you never know. Okay, moving on. Keep in mind, so here's DM rule number five, we'll say. <laughs> and that is um, make sure that you pay attention to the fact that people have a short attention span. So I've been testing different things out like written messages, voice messages, video message, um, because you're able to do all of those things on Instagram and Facebook. And I find that shorter messages get better responses. I find that a quick voice note gets a good response. Um, you know, videos are great if you start to already know the person a little bit and you, you know, you want to send a friendly response. Um, so it, Test out little things, but make sure it's short to the point and it's not your life story. Okay, and then uh, the next thing that I wanted to mention, tip number uh, seven is, or six, yeah, okay. So I, I would make sure, I can't read my writing. Hmm. Oh yeah, okay, here's the thing. A lot of people get really nervous about sales and they think that, messaging people equals sales but if you go in with that mindset you're setting yourself up to mm, feel weird about it and you have to think about it as like I, like messaging personally people is kind of like being at a cocktail party and going up to somebody and introducing yourself that's not weird right because if you're or you're at a networking event or you're at a um like party and you're just going up to somebody new to introduce yourself. Do you start with, hey, you know, I have this offer, I really think you'd love it. No, always think about, you know, thank you, Teresa, thanks for your comment. Um, always think about, I would introduce myself, I would ask them about them, we would start a conversation, that kind of thing. Um, and, and the other, the, the thing that about sales is like, if I was afraid, so you can't be afraid of sales, just period. And if you are, we got to talk about it on a free strategy call. Sales, if you offer something of value that changes people's lives 
and helps them either get more time, make more money, get their health back, live longer, uh, have less like fear in life or mindset barriers, you are serving. And if I was afraid of sales and if I was afraid of reaching out to new people and if I was afraid of starting conversations with people, I wouldn't have my current clients. I would have an email list of like two people and I would be not working with my clients who are currently seeing success. One of my clients is selling packages from $1,000 to $9,000. That's higher even than I charge, but he's awesome. One of, And he deserves it and he has a great network and he has a huge background. So I love that he's doing that. Second, I have a client who it, uh, booked her first client online within three sessions of her four month package. I have a client who has a group program coming out in 10 weeks and led a local workshop that was filled with local ladies who were her ideal clients. I have a client who coaches PGA golfers and athletes and high level like executives on their mental performance and is leading workshops in Arizona and being asked to do all these things. And I, I'm telling you this not to brag, but kind of to brag because my clients are the most awesome people ever. But I'm telling you this because I wouldn't have these clients if I didn't actively engage with them, if I didn't follow up with them, if I didn't book a free strategy call with them, if I didn't in, want, you know, if I wasn't interested in them in their best interests and in what they were, wanted for their life, if I didn't care about those things, uh, I wouldn't be working with them currently because it doesn't just fall into your lap. That's the thing I want to get across in this message. And I'm sorry, I'm coming off a little sassy, but I think a lot of people just think I'm going to set up, you know, my posts. I'm going to, you know, have a call to action in my posts uh, and it's just going to take off. And it can happen that way. It is a long-term game. If you're consistent with it, that's great. But you have to, this is like a big part of your business. And if you guys are a coach, the thing I think people don't see is that 80% of your business is the promo, is the reaching out to people, is the building relationships and nurturing them every day. And 20% of it's actually working with your clients, actually working on your client materials actually like doing what you doing what you do as a coach but you have to remember this other side to your job and that is getting a little out of your comfort zone until it becomes natural to talk to new people and um the last two tips that i wanted to share with you guys is um who are you supposed to reach out to because i know like you guys might have a small following you might be just starting out so what do you do so first of all there's a few pe different groups that you can be engaging with. One is your current following. So if you haven't already personally talked to your followers, I would start doing that um, via DM, liking their stuff, engaging with them. Second thing is pe new people who watch your story. So if you use a hashtag in your story or a location tag in your Instagram story and you're getting new viewers, and they're coming back and they're watching some a few of your stories you can you know follow them engage with them thank them for watching your your story um that's another example if you have a public profile and you go to or if the people who are using hashtags have a public profile you can go to the search page on instagram you could search hashtags your ideal clients are using you can find people in the recent section of that search page for the hashtag and contact, you know, see if they're, you know, engage with those people, like some of their photos, comment on a few, build friendship, um, and let that grow over time. That's another example. So it's not just your followers, but it's also people who are using hashtags, people who uh, you can look at, look through location tags. Maybe there's a common location where your ideal clients would hang out and you search that. Um, stuff like that. And, it, and a lot of you guys are going to think, well, that's weird. That's evasive, whatever. But if you believe in what you're doing and if you, um, you know, are in this for the long run and you do want to build your audience over time and you know you're putting good tips out there, this stuff's worth it. It's worth it to spend time on this and engage with new people every day. Um, and then the last thing is, if you, once you do reach out to people, this is the biggest mistake. Can anybody guess what the biggest mistake is when you are reaching out to people, building relationships, networking, etc.? It is not keeping track of who you've talked to and not following up ever. 
Okay, so what happens is a lot of times we just get so busy with everything and you're, you know, contacting people and then you never, like you forget, you, you keep reaching out to new people, you're not building what Tim Ferriss calls 1,000 true fans, people you actually have real relationships with, people who keep coming back to check out your stuff, people you keep checking in with to see how they're doing and how their journey's going. That's what I'm talking about. So anytime you reach out to somebody who you really jive with, and I'm not talking about if you find somebody, you start a conversation and it's just like, yikes, this, we're not a match, we have nothing in common, this is not going anywhere. I'm not talking about that. But if you hit it off with somebody and they say, I'm going on vacation next month, and you follow up and say, how was your vacation? That's what I'm talking about. That's what I mean. Keeping track of who these people are. And I literally keep notes Thing. Like one of my strengths, I think, and I'm not like, because I teach this, it, it's really important to me is, is yes, getting organized, Teresa. And that's like keeping track of who you talk to, when they, when to follow up, what you guys talked about, what social media platform you talk to them on and making it easier for yourself. Cause you got, you guys as coaches have a lot going on. You got your current clients, you got the promo work, you got your email list, you got like, there's a lot going on, right? So give yourself the gift of keeping a notes app in your phone or something like that. That's easy. And you can just type in like, okay, here's who I need to check in with this week. And during my one hour or, and I bulk this. So you guys don't, whatever you do after this video, don't just constantly be checking your phone all day and reaching out to new people all throughout the day and, and answering a Facebook message anytime it comes in. Whew. That will set you up to want to cry. Instead, batch this. Dedicate one hour, sit down, go to your Instagram, plow through your messages, answer everybody. Go to Facebook, check all your messages from yesterday, plow through and answer all of them. That's really the best way to do this otherwise you're going to drive yourself mad <laughs> okay um and and what the good news when you batch it is you can have your notes app open you can be tracking it as you go and you can keep returning to that anytime you do it in the future when you're batching right okay so who has questions um about dms the whole push pull push versus pulling when it comes to marketing and um follow-ups, etc. Anybody? All right. I appreciate you for watching and thanks for being a part of this little three-day Instagram mini series. The two videos will be, all the videos will stay up in, uh, in the Health Coach Nation Facebook group. I'll use the hashtag IG tips in case you want to go back and watch the videos in order. There's not, it, you don't need to watch them in order, but the tips all add up. Um, and then just a friendly reminder that the Zero to Hero group program is coming out and we'll have a whole section on Instagram, whole section with templates, um, how that works. And I'll be able to even share screenshots of examples of messages and how, you, how it goes, what's the flow of the conversation, right? Because even though it seems like it should come natural, I know it's weird because it's online, right? And it is a little different than in person and at a networking event. So I understand why you guys are like, how does this work? Um, so we're going to really cover that in depth. All right. Thank you, Teresa. Have a good night, everybody. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Be sure to get your free gift over at HaleyRowe.com by joining my email list. And remember, you can always connect with me and other health coaches in the Health Coach Nation free Facebook group where I post trainings and videos on how to take your health coaching business to the next level. Can't wait to connect with you. Have an awesome day.